Okay guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the new features in the new uh, version 2.0 firmware on the FlySky FSI6S. And uh, this is the uh, firmware dated July 8th. Now there's some confusion out there about version 1.11, which was dated uh, June 30th, 2016. And really there's not that much difference between 2.0 and 1.11. Uh, I know that some people were having trouble going from 1.11 to 2.0 and um, I, would t I would say to them there probably is going to be a update to get you to 2.0 at some point but the only difference that I can tell between 1.11 and 2.0 is the uh, throttle mode feature and that is missing in 1.11 which is in um, version 2. Now if you're on uh, one of the older versions of the firmware like uh, 1.0 or 0.99 then uh, you'll probably want to upgrade to 2.0 or 1.11 which has these newer features and uh, I'll have a link up here on the screen uh, with a link to that video that explains how to do the uh, firmware upgrade now I'm not going to talk about the features that were previously in the older version that's already in the new version. I'm just going to only talk about the features that are in the new version. So if you want to watch my other video where I talk about the uh, review of this transmitter, I go over all the functions in the original firmware. And anything that is in the original firmware that's duplicated in this firmware, I'm not going to talk about it in this video because that would just be redundant. So I'll put a link to that video so you can watch that one if you'd like to uh, get an idea of what those other, other functions do. So basically in the new version uh, they've split the menu between function and system whereas before it was all in one menu and the, the new features that I'm going to talk about in this video are going to be uh, the model memory, the trim function, rates and expo, the throttle curve, and the low signal alarm. Okay the first feature we're going to talk about is the model memory. So you get to that you go hit the uh, settings button Make sure that you're in the system menu and then you're going to select models and here you have up to five models to choose from and so we'll select model one and you can give it an ID number you can change it here we're going to leave it as one so it's not confusing So then, right now the transmitter is uh, going to be working with settings dealing with this particular model, model 1. And so anything you change will be staved with this model. If you change to a different model, then obviously all the settings will be in this model and not the other one. So just to make that clear. So I'm going to go ahead and bind um, one of my receivers. I've got two different receivers here. I've got a an uh, FSIA-10B and I also have a FSIA-6B. So I'm, I'm going to bind model 1 to the 10B. So we'll go ahead and plug in our bind plug and then uh, give it power and then we're in bind mode and we'll go ahead and hit receiver bind and now that it stops flashing, we're bound. And I'll go ahead and exit this menu. Unplug the bind plug. And let's power cycle the receiver. Okay, we're back in. And I will go ahead and plug in a servo into channel 1 for the aileron channel. And uh, you can see that the receiver is working. So if we end up uh, switching the model to a different model, go here to settings. And it's telling us that if we want to switch models, we need to turn off the receiver. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now it's letting us change our model. So we'll go ahead and select model 2. And if we go back out, so if we go ahead and uh, plug in our receiver 
while we're on a different model, not model one. See that it's basically not binding, it's just flashing here. We're looking for the transmitter and nothing is working. So what I'll do is, you now while we're in model two, I'll bind the other receiver, the 6B, to this model. I'm going to unplug this. Plug in our bind plug. And we'll give it power. And we're flashing here, so the, the quick flash means we're in bind mode. We'll hit receiver bind. So now we have a bind here. We have a solid light for the uh, 6B. And we'll go ahead and plug in our servo, it's the aileron channel. And now we can see that on model two, this receiver is now working. So I'll go ahead and unplug the bind plug, unplug the power. And now that we've unpowered the receiver, it says it's missing. So we'll go back to models and switch it to model, back to model one. And so go ahead and plug in our server back into the other receiver, the, so the 10B. And we'll plug in our power. You get the sound saying that the it's found the receiver, you get a solid orange light. And our servo was working. So you can see that's how the uh, model memory is working properly. So basically with this model memory feature, you can have up to five different receivers and of course one receiver per model. Okay, the next feature we're gonna look at is the trim function. Go back into the settings and we'll hit the function menu and we will go down to trims. And here it explains a little bit how to do the uh, trim function, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate for you on video. First thing you wanna do is turn it on. And then in order to use the trim function, you gotta go back out to the main screen and then swipe over to the channel monitor. And then what you wanna do is you wanna press the key button here on the back, which is this one here, which is key one, which is going to be on the left side of the transmitter, on this side of the transmitter behind your left hand. And so in order to trim a channel, you have to press the key button down, you get a, a, a noise, and you get some beeps, and then you, you move the uh, appropriate channel in the direction that you want to trim it. And it'll only work while um, you hold the button down. So you press the you press the key button down, you get a beep. And then you start hearing these um, beeps as you're trimming. And as you can see here, as I as I trim the aileron over to the right, the channel monitor is showing that that is going over to the right like that. So we'll go ahead and, and trim it back. And when it hits center, it'll it'll beep twice, so you know that you're mid, hit the middle, right there. So you know that you're back to the center. If you want to trim the other channels, like the uh, elevator, hold down the key button, and then you can trim the elevator. As you can see, the channel monitor is showing what's going on there. And then go back to center it. So that's how you basically trim the. Uh, four channels here without obviously without the uh, trim buttons that's pretty much the only way you can do it i know that it's a little bit awkward uh, especially for you airplane guys that need uh, to do the trimming while you're in the air um, unfortunately it looks like uh, you know this might be a little bit challenging to do that while you're in the air but uh, it is still possible okay the next function we're going to talk about is the rates and expo in the settings and it's going to be just past trims here here we're going to set uh, 
the rate for the aileron channel is channel one. You can just basically you can set the rate or the expo by selecting it, and you can reduce it by just hitting the plus and minus buttons. Hold it, and it'll it'll just keep on going. So if you want to reduce your weight to that percentage, you can do that. And then if you want to add expo to this channel, you just press and hold that, and you get a nice little expo curve there. And that's the maximum expo is 100%. And then if you want to reset this back to defaults, you just hit the uh, little button here. It looks like a little arrow, a circular arrow. And it'll ask you yes or no and everything goes back to defaults there. So if you want to select the other channels like the elevator and the rudder, you just select the channel here and then channels one, either one, two is elevator and four is rudder. And then you can select those there to add uh, rates and expo to those channels. Okay, the next function is going to be the throttle curve. And so here you can uh, set I believe it's at five different levels here, from L1, 2, 3, and high. And you can have different uh, amounts of throttle at each of these different levels. So let's say if you have zero at, at, at L, at the lowest setting, go to one, it's set to 25% as the default. And then two is 50, 75, and 100. So say if you wanted to uh, have a little bit less throttle on the low end, could bring that down to say 17% and then on the high end you could increase this and it gives you a nice little throttle curve like that so you can adjust these to whatever percentages you want uh, to, uh, based on whatever your uh, needs are if you want to reset everything back to defaults just press the, the button here in the corner. And you're back to the defaults. Okay, so the last function is going to be the uh, low signal alarm. And uh, you get that when the receiver is bound. And right now there's no receiver, so let me go ahead and plug in my receiver again. Okay, so we're plugged in again on this particular receiver. And you see we have a receiver battery level right there. So if you swipe over to the right, you get a signal strength indicator here as the third option or the third um, attribute. And it shows here as a value of 10. It goes from 0 to 10, obviously. And since the receiver is right here next to it, um, you get a value of 10. Okay guys, so that covers all the new features in uh, this version 2.0 firmware. If uh, you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, in the next video in this series covering this transmitter, I'm going to show how to configure your receiver with CleanFlight for both uh, PPM and IBUS modes. So um, stay tuned for that video coming up pretty soon. It'll be in probably like a few days or about a week.